Welcome to Bant's Bash. Hope you're excited to get a whole motley crew of creatures on the battlefield and swing into the combat zone. Uh, but yeah, as far as this deck goes, this is actually the blue-green core uh, merfolk deck that comes with Magic Arena. Um, we've still left kind of the tribal aspect to it, left at the core. Uh, we have a lot of nice one-drop merfolk to get down and still have the tribal lords in here. And of course, the beautiful one-drop Tatnova, uh, being able to cash in some card draw and life gain off of our land drops is always a nice thing to do. Now, as far as the splash for white, we've got some really good cards in here we can jolly sunwing uh, that's definitely gonna allow us to make sure our opponent's creatures into the battlefield tapped and hopefully kind of clear the way for us to swing in uh, mentor of the mix is going to give us some awesome card draw um, a lot of the converted mana cost of these creatures is you know one two or three and so we can get some really good card draw going with mentor of the meek and also running knight of autumn it's going to be a really nice modal creature we can make it a four three if we need to to swing in and deal combat damage or if we need to take care of some sort of artifact enchantments uh, we can certainly use that too. Uh, but basically the core of the deck is just to swarm a ton of creatures on the battlefield. Um, non morfolk creatures that really make a difference. We have Beast Whisper in here that's going to allow us to cash in card draw. Uh, War Leader is going to allow us to get a few more of those cat tokens on the battlefield. And then on the back end, we're looking to win with something like Dream Eater, Carnage Tyrant. And if we can't get that going, uh, kind of tap out for something like Camaraderie to get a ton of card draw and kind of refuel our hand and hopefully close the game out with combat damage. But that is the core of the deck. I have some awesome gameplay videos for you coming up, so stick around. Welcome to Bant Bash. Hope you're excited to get some creatures down and swing across on our opponent and get some card draw going. That's what this deck wants to do. Um, as far as our opening hand goes, yeah, this is wonderful. We have Mandarin River, uh, we have Double Forest, uh, we have a nice uh, card to work towards in Carnage Tyrant, especially with uh, Grow From Ashes, so we'll definitely keep on this one. And then some nice little merfolk, so we're going to keep. And then I'll kind of explain what we've got going on with the deck here in just a second. So our opponent's going to lead off with Planes, and then Explosive Apparatus. Okay, so hopefully we're not playing against an aggro deck. Um, <laughs> we keep getting, this deck's a lot of fun to pilot, but... Um, it just needs a little bit of time to set some stuff up because once we go to the late game, we get some really good, uh, really good card advantage going sometimes. All right, so two two flyer. That's not too bad. We can survive off that. Uh, it's going to get down four. So it's going to go for deep root elite. Yeah, I like that. We'll get that down. It's going to be a one one. We're going to pass the turn to our opponent. Uh, next turn, we are looking at four. So we'll probably end up going for a grow from ashes just to get that land on the battlefield. That way, we're at least going to be able to ramp pretty quick into route. But if we're playing against mono white flyers, uh oh, that might be uh. It might be over pretty quick. Uh, let's go and get down Harbor, because we do have a force. Enter the battlefield untapped. Uh, let's go and go for Grow from Ashes. Uh, let's go and go for the uh, basic one. And we'll go and grab simply just another island, since we do at least have double force in the hand. Island goes onto the battlefield, and then we'll go and pass the turn to our opponent. No attackers. Um... Yeah, because they have that 1-3, so no attacks. Uh, we are looking at basically them swinging across for a 2-2 two, two, and a 1-3, so about 3 in the air, which is not too bad. But at least at this point right now, if we can somehow stabilize, we do have camaraderie, which is going to allow us to gain a pretty good chunk of life if we can draw into that. Um, let's go ahead and get down. Let's go for Route. Yeah, I like that. We go for Route. That's going to get two more lands on the battlefield. That allows us to go for Carnage Tyrant. Uh, we do need to grab another White Source for the uh, Cat in our hand. And then we'll go and grab one more green. So while well, we have me at Harbor, so we'll just grab another white source. Okay, uh, let's go and go up forest down. Let's get down Lana War Elves. And then we'll go on no attacks, and we'll go and pass the turn to our opponent. But yeah, this is what this deck wants to do. It wants to ramp. So we've got one, two, three, four, five, six, seven. Uh, we have seven total mana. That's going to put us in a position to where we can go for Carnage Tyrant. If we get down Carnage Tyrant, that might allow us to hopefully... Uh, Let's see, they're going to 2 damage to any target. They're going to target our Deep uh, Root Elite, and they will be swinging in for a 3-1 and a 2-2. Two, two. Now, this uh, Instructor is basically just a 3-1, so we'll definitely be going for the uh, block with Lano War Elves on the Instructor. It's to be fun to see uh, a lot of War Elves. All right, there we go. They're going to trade on that one. They both trade with their different weapons. We're drawn to planes. Let's go get down planes, and then... So we don't have reach. We're looking at four. Yeah, we need to get a big clock on our opponent. So let's go and get down Carnage Tyrant. And unfortunately, if we had Lana War Elves, we could have gotten down J Light Ranger too. But at this point, uh, we're going to get down Carnage. Look at that. <laughs> I love it. That's pretty cool. I always like seeing that. Um, all right, so they're going to be swinging across. And Carnage Tyrant does have Trample. So, and then we draw into Beast Whisper. Which actually, if we get down Beast Whisper, that's going to allow us to... Actually, we need to leave up double green for this. Gonna be, let's go double white. Actually, let's do this. Let's do it this way. Let's go, and sw go into combat. And then Haunts and Wisdoms will give them a, a soldier token. It's going to make them go down to 14. 
And then let's see if make sure we tap down correct, because we need at least double green for Beast Whisper. There we go. Let's get on Beast Whisper, and then we'll also cast a War Leader. Which allows us to draw a card off of Beast Whisper. Draw to Jade Bear, okay. And then we'll go and pass the turn to our opponent. So at least on the back end, we're looking at the seven. It's going to be 11. There will be 13 on our opponent. So we'll see if they do want to swing in with the whole crew. That's going to be one, two, three, four. It's going to put us down to two. And then we draw the Merfolk Mistbinder. And we'll see what they have. It looks like we should be able to. Uh, we have another Merfolk. So you know, let's see if we can't just cash in something. Let's go for Jade Bearer. It's going to allow us to draw a card. Draw into Island. Okay. Let's go and get down Island. Let's go and go for Merfolk Mistbinder. Drawn to Selesnia Guildgate. And let's go and send uh, the entire crew in, because we're basically at two. So we're going to send that, and we're also going to get a couple cat tokens swinging in, too. There we go. Knock our opponent down to zero. I'll take him. <laughs> so you can see what this deck is trying to do, is really put a lot of pressure on our opponent, swarm the board. And um, we had a lot of pressure from those white flyers swinging in at the beginning. Uh, but thankfully, the Carnage Tyrant that really allowed us to kind of push, up, uh, push past the uh, mono-white deck our opponent assembled. So I will see you in game two. Welcome to Bant Bash. Game number two, playing against Liliana. She looks excited. She's got her hands up there, that little glowing orb. As far as our opening hand goes, we have Mandarin River, Plains Island. Uh, we have War Leader. Uh, we do not have green. Yeah, do we have a mulligan? Yeah, let's go on mulligan. Um, yes, this is good. We have This is a really wonderful hand. We will keep on this one. Hopefully, we've drawn a few more lands. But between Deep Root and then Kumina, uh, we will keep on this. I, I like it. Tranquil Expanse, that will definitely go on top because that will be our white... Um, our white source for the deck, and our third land. Uh, it's going to lead off with Forest, and then we're going to go and pass the turn to our opponent. Uh, but yeah, since the game one kind of got off to a really quick start, what are we doing with this deck? This is basically just kind of blue-green merfolk uh, that we, um, yeah, I want to get down Kumina. So let's go to get down Tranquil Expanse, and that'll put us in a position where we can go for Kumina next turn. Uh, but yes, through, so basically with Arena, you have rewards, and one of the rewards is if you do certain things, you get a deck. Uh oh playing against Rat Colony. All right. <laughs> <laughs> let's go. Let's have some fun. Uh, let's get down Island, and uh, I'll kind of explain the rest of it here in a second. Let's go ahead and get down to Kamina. That way we can at least kind of stop these rats from eating our deck. And then look at Kamina right there. Looking good, buddy. Uh, but yeah, so basically it was a blue-green uh, Merfolk deck, and then I turned it into a uh, into a Bant uh, Bash deck. And yeah, this is... Uh, we need to get some sort of answer uh, going pretty quick. Um, the only way that we can kind of get something... Yeah, we need to get down... Search for Ascantha, because that's going to allow us to start digging into our library. The only thing we need to do is basically is get to six mana and then find uh, River's Rebuke. So let's go get down Meandering River, and then we'll go ahead and pass the turn. No attacks uh, from... No, no, no. No attack. <laughs> I said no attacks, and I clicked on attacks, and I got really worried. So basically, they get down another uh, rat colony. It's going to make it a bunch of four ones. Uh, we can trade with one... Oh, that is just brutal. Okay, um, it's going to be 10. It's going to knock us down to 10. <laughs> That's one of the downsides to playing against Rat Colony and Singleton is that it's just like... <laughs> It's so overpowered. Um, it's just funny that this like rat deck is just like taking over the meta. Uh, let's go ahead and put that in the graveyard for right now because that it's not a land drop and it doesn't help us get ahead. And we're drawn to make a stand. Okay, so that's going to be... We need to get a creature down for next turn. Otherwise, we're just dead. Well, I think either way, we're dead. So we go for make a stand. Yeah, let me see. So we go for Deep Root Champion. That's still going to be 10 going across for next turn. And then uh, we get to put plus one counter on it, but we can't cast that. And we don't have enough ways just simply just to be blockers on that side of the battlefield. <laughs> good game to our opponent. Yeah, good game, buddy. <laughs> We're going to scoop this one up. Yeah, uh, we'll, uh, we'll see you in game three. <laughs> rat colony, got it. Anyway, all right, yeah. <laughs> the, uh, not much else to say on that. Those are going to be rat colony. But it is does remind me that rats are always a really fun tribe to play, which is pretty cool. So anyway, I'll see you in game three. Welcome back to Bant Bash. Game number three, playing Gideon, who's got his, his fist punch, falcon punch, ready to go. Well, you know what, Gideon, we are ready for you. So bring it, buddy. Um, we have... Triple Plains and Harbor. Chromatic Lantern. Well, that's basically going to make it any land. So, yeah, we'll keep on this one. I like Kinjali Sunwing. I like Merfolk Mistbinder. Hopefully, we get a little bit of card draw going. 
and then we'll be able to kind of go from there. Uh, let's go ahead and get down harbor. It's going to enter the Bountiful Tap since we definitely do not have a uh, a force or a planes, and then we'll be able to get down planes. And then uh, once we get down Chromatic Lantern, we can kind of go from there. Uh, we can at least get down Dryad Green Speaker and kind of start filtering the top part of our library. Let's go to get down planes. Let's go for Green Speaker, Green Seeker, excuse me. And then we'll go and pass the turn to our opponent. Uh, but hopefully, it looks like we're playing against Black Blue Demir, which if this is going to be a little bit of a slower matchup, I definitely welcome it very much. Let's go and get down planes. Um, yeah, let's go for a green speaker activation. Um, oh, it's on top. Yeah, yeah. There we go. Sorry, I'm not used to that. So we two draw into force, which is really nice. Um, do we want to go for? Yeah, we'll go for Chromatic Lancer. See if that sticks. If we got a counter spell, so be it. And then that puts us online for. Um, Going for opt on our opponent's turn, so yeah, that's perfectly fine. I like it. And it's we played against uh, we played we saw mono white flyers aggro, and then we played against rat colony. So it's really nice to be playing against a soul tie. It looks like we're playing against soul tie deck. That's going to be a little bit more uh, <laughs> a little bit more even match, or at least kind of allows us to do some stuff. That's one of the downsides to rat colony is that it uh, it's a fun deck, but and I don't know, it's a, it's a little overpowered in Singleton. Uh, do you want Kumina? We actually have some pretty good Merfolks. Um, yeah, we're going to leave that on top. I like drawing into that. We can get down Merfolk, Mistbinder. That'll be a land drop. We can also get down Kumina. And then, so with Antiquities War, look at the top five real and artifact. I need to pick that up for my... Uh, I'm kind of working on a mono blue Tezzeret deck, which has uh, been pretty fun so far in the Singleton format. But I love the art on that. It looks good. I was going to get down Forest. It doesn't really matter with Chromatic Lantern. We can kind of do whatever we want. Um, let's go and go for Merfolk Mistbinder. And let's go and go for Kumina. And then we need at least one more Merfolk on the battlefield to get that card draw going. I was going to go for Dryad Dream Speaker activation. It's going to be, yes, we'll reveal it. Keep that land in our hand, and then we'll go ahead and go to combat, and then pass the turn to our opponent. Kick it back over. So at least next turn, we're going to be able to get into a position where we've got some pretty good damage we can put on our opponent. Now, with the Antiquities of War, they're going to get to that third ability. Artifacts you control become artifact creatures with um, a 5-5 five, five base power and toughness. Um, they need definitely need to get some sort of artifacts on the battlefield to take advantage of that. And so we'll kind of play around it. And in fact, if we get down Kanjali Sunwing, um, if they are playing either just straight up artifacts or simply, uh-oh, Hostage Taker. Yeah, that's fine. Yeah, that's cool. Uh, if they want to take Kumina, so be it. Uh, they can steal Kumina, and uh, I doubt they have too many merfolk over there. Yeah, we're going to let that go through. <laughs> that's pretty cool seeing that uh, Hostage Taker sword. Uh, let's go and get down. Let's go for a Green Seeker activation. It's going to be Jungle Born on top of our library. You know, let's go for Rao. That way we can search up some gate cards and get on the battlefield. We can't get down Kanjali Sunwing. But think of this turn. I really like ramping. I, I like the ability of ramping. So let's go, go for Route. Let's grab Selesnia Guildgate. I think that's the only Guildgate we have in here. Uh, we've got Planes, Planes for us. We'll go and grab another island just in case something happens to Chromatic Lantern. Uh, let's get down Meandering River. It's going to enter the battlefield tapped. And then we're going to swing with the 2 2. Now, no attackers. We'll just go and pass the turn to our opponent. And that hostage taker, um, you, may, you may cast that card for as long as uh, it remains exiled. So they can cast it if they want to. And they can um, spin mana or any color to cast that spell. So they can definitely get down their very own Kumina. And then, uh, yeah, which is definitely that's what they're going to go for. All right. Kumina got tired of playing on our side of the battlefield. It's going to go join hostage taker. It is kind of flavorful, though, if you think about it, about uh, Hostage Taker being on a ship and Kumina joining up with them for some odd reason. All right, so we've got Hostage Taker swinging in. That's going to be a 2-3. It's going to knock us down to 18, and then we draw into Sleep, so we can send our opponent's creatures to sleep. Uh, let's go for Dryad uh, Green Seeker. Tatyova is on top of our library. Yeah, I like that. So since we were way okay on lands, we're not going to go for something like District Guide. Um... Yeah, we're going to hold on to these land drops, actually. Let's simply just go and get down Kanjali Sunwing. It's going to make sure our opponent's creatures enter the battlefield tapped, and then we're just simply just going to go and pass the turn to our opponent. Because um, in this particular matchup, since it is going to be a little, little bit longer of a grindier matchup, um, having card draws is basically going to be king. So if we can get down Tatyova, we can get Tatyova to stick and get some card draws, some life gain, that'll really help us get some sort of a card advantage. 
Okay, Tender Shoot Dryad. I need to pick that one up too because that's a really good. Uh, I have a rare wild card that's just sitting there and I need to cash in because Tender Shoot Dryad is such a good card, especially once you get that City's Blessing going. If you don't have any spot removal as soon as that happens, um, yeah. And you get a sapling at the beginning of each upkeep, which is just insane. Uh, it's going to get down Tat Yova. See if this sticks. They do have a two mana spell. They do have two mana available. Oh no, do they have Disdainful Stroke? Oh, they've got it. Okay, we'll let that go through. <laughs> That's a bummer. Okay, uh, let's go ahead and get down uh, Island. It's going to enter the battlefield. Um, and we can go for Sleep if we wanted to. Let's go for uh, Dryad Green Seeker. River's Rebuke. Yeah, we don't want to go for District Guide, so we're, we're going to go ahead and keep that. Um, let's simply go to Combat. We swing in for a 2-3. We're going to get some really quick pressure from these sapling tokens. Pretty bad. Um, yeah, let's just go and leave up Kinjali. Actually, no, we'll, we'll go and swing in. They don't have anything with reach. and No, we'll go hold them back. We're, we're going to hold them back at this point. Uh, we did make the land drop for the turn. Let's go and pass the turn to our opponent. So we have River's Rebuke on top of our library. Um, and we'll use that next turn and kind of send everything back to the hand. Unfortunately, that does give them access to another hostage taker if they want to recast it. And um, if they do end up... So we might end up trading with Kajali Sunwing. That way they just don't have something that good to uh, go for off of River's Rebuke. And really kind of make them... Uh, well, excuse me. They're going to go for Raska's Contempt on it. So get out of here, Kajali Sunwing. And the Kibisher's inside to draw a couple cards. And they do have a 2-3 and the 2-4. And they're going to send the whole crew in on this one. Not going to block with Merfolk. Well, actually, yes. Let's go and block with Merfolk Mistbinder on Hostage Taker. That way they don't get that access with Kumina. So they're going to get in. Yeah, that's fine. And we'll go for River's Rebuke next turn. Yeah, let's go and go to Combat because we don't want them to have a Green Seeker. Well, actually, we can force them to use it on Green Seeker. Let's go for the Activated Ability of Green Seeker. Grow from Ashes. Okay. Um, let's go and get down Plains. Let's go and go for River's Rebuke. At this point right now, we're just trying to buy some time. So we're going to send everything back to their hand. Look at Gideon. Hey, Gideon, everything's going back. That's his face. He's mad. Um, let's go for District Guide, because Grow from Ashes is nice, but um, actually, that's going to bring back Kumina back to our hand. And that'll at least kind of force them to go for Hostage Taker on Kumina. Okay, there we go. Kumina's back. We convinced him to join our side of the ship. Um, like I mentioned, they can go for a hostage taker if they want to again, and they're going to get down Tender Shoot Dryad to kind of try to rebuild that board state. Now, the only downside is that we got Tat Yova got countered, which is just a huge major bummer with Tat Yova, um, because once we get some land drops flowing, that's what's kind of basically this started out as a Tat Yova deck, and uh, you get some good stuff going with Tat Yova. Okay, drawn to Grow from Ashes. Um, let's go ahead and go for. There we go. Go for Green Seeker. Let's look real the top card. Charter Course. Let's go for Grow from Ashes. It's going to be... um. F uh, f let's do the kicker cost on that. And we're going to grab Forest. And let's grab Plains. Excuse me, Island. Let's go for District Guide. That way we at least have some sort of creature on the battlefield. And we'll grab an Island. You can see if we had Tat Yova on the battlefield, how absolutely nice it would be, how much life gain we'd be getting, how much card draw we'd be getting. And then we don't really necessarily need sleep, so let's just go and pass the turn to our opponent, and we'll try to use sleep for next turn. Uh, we are sitting at 36 cards in our library, so we do have Dream Eater. Uh, we do have Carnage Tyrant in here. We do have a couple other options. We have Camarader, which can allow us to draw some cards. So hopefully if we draw into some sort of... Um, you know, high impact spell, we can really get that going. All right, we got Kamina on the battlefield, then Underrealm Lich, which is going to be uh, really interesting. Okay, so we're looking at at least three from the Sapling Token, two from Hostage Take, that's going to be five. Um, so we're looking at five this turn, which is going to put us down to eight if they decide to swing in, which they certainly can. Because all we do is have, all we basically have is District Guide. So uh, no blockers, we're going to let that go through. We'll wait till the absolute bare minimum before we need to go for blockers. Okay, so we oh there we go, drawn to Carnage Tyrant. Uh, let's go and get down Island. Let's go for okay. So we have one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve. We have thirteen total mana, which we can definitely get that down. So let's go and go for Carnage Tyrant. Love it if man if Carnage Tyrant had haste. Oh, that'd be that'd be so good. This is definitely an uphill battle, but let's go and go, look at that. He's mad. <laughs> He's like you stole Kumina from us. Let's go for sleep. Let's tap all creatures. Target player controls. 
Now, if they have a counter spell, they've got it, but at least at this point right now, we can go and force the, uh, make them all go to sleep. All right, there we go. All right, so we're going to go to combat. All right, so we got two attackers. That's going to knock them down to uh, 19. A little behind on the combat damage, but at least having them locked down, that's definitely good for us. Now, they can rebuild. They've only got one card in the hand. They do have Chemister's Insight in their graveyard, so that's something they can kind of jumpstart to draw a few more cards. But, um... We'll see if we can't sort of uh, get a, at least a little bit more. We'll see what we draw into. We at least have Dryad Green Speaker to uh, kind of look at the top part of our library. Opponent's going to go for Chemistry's Insight, draw two cards. And that does leave them one, two, three, four, five, six. They have six total mana available. So we'll Vraska. Okay. So we got Vraska on the battlefield. Uh, plus one sacrifice a permanent to gain a life. And then they're going to use the uh, draw card and gain a life. Okay. Definitely a good option to go for. Now, that does allow us to go for Carnage Tyrant for next turn. It is only sitting at a 6 at this point right now. To uh, We can swing a Carnage Tyrant, but I think at this point right now, we'll see what we draw into. We're just basically almost kind of dead on board, unfortunately. Especially with them getting down that uh, Gorgon uh, with Death Touch. Let's go for Green Seeker. And let's go and go for Chartacores. That's going to be Elvis Rejuvenator and Island. So we'll go and discard um, Island at this point right now. But even if we do get down Elvis Rejuvenator, yeah, they're pretty much going to get on this one because we simply can, just can't get enough blockers to stop that. So good game to our opponent. Definitely enjoyed it. It was really nice to kind of have a lot of back and forth. We tried to get him locked down with Sleep and River's Rebuke, but it was kind of an uphill battle on that game. So we're going to go and scoop it up. And unfortunately, I think that might bring us to uh, two losses for this entire match. We'll see. And that will be a defeat. But uh, you can see what the deck's trying to do. Get some really good card advantage. And then there's, you know, there's a few cards that we just really need to pick up to kind of help this deck. That turns our graveyard online. But I just haven't enough time to uh, to crack some packs for Arena. So let's go to Crane the claim the prize for what we won. Ooh, we got a mythic. So let's see what this one card is. Thud. Always nice to have. And see this last divine visitation. Very nice. Okay. Might have to see some sort of token build in the near future with divine visitation. So uh, that's going to be it for Bant Bash. Unfortunately, we didn't do too well, um, but it was nice to kind of play against that Soul Type Raska deck. That was uh, pretty fun. It's always nice getting some good back and forth and some magic. So if you enjoyed the video, like and subscribe. Thanks. Bye.